Hello, and welcome to our video on Problem Solving Part 1, brought to you by the Answer Series. The next four videos are going to be looking at problem solving questions. You are going to get problem solving questions in your exams. So what you need to do is you need to practice some. You need to try them. You need to get to the stage where you're not scared to try. It doesn't matter what happens with them, just give them a go. So in this video, what I suggest you do is see what you can do with these and then we'll look at them together and as you see solutions, so you might become happier to keep going with trying them. Example number one. You've got three examples. Now, often problem-solving questions have a lot of words in them. So take some time to read the words and try and work out what it is that they're asking you to do. So pause the video, try these three, and then we'll look at them together. The first one, they've told you that 2 to the x times 3 to the y is 24 to the 6. The first thing I do is I think 24 is 8 times 3. 8 is 2 cubed, so I can write 24 as 2 cubed times 3. This 6 belongs to both of these bases, and remember I multiply the indices, so it becomes 2 to the 18 times 3 to the 6. Now I equate like bases, so 2 to the x and 2 to the 18 must be equal. In other words, x must be 18. 3 to the y and 3 to the 6 must be equal. So y must be 6. They've asked me for x minus y, so 18 minus 6 is 12. That one wasn't too bad, so let's keep going. Number 1.2, they tell you that n is the largest integer and I need to determine the value of n. So the first thing I do is I'm going to take the 200th root on both sides. And remember we've got this law. The pth root of a to the q is a to the power q over p. So this becomes 5 to the power 300 over 200. In other words, 5 to the 3 over 2. I then use this law the other way. And this becomes the square root of 5 cubed, which is the square root of 125. You know that the square root of 121 is 11, and the square root of 144 is 12. So if I want n to be less than root 125, the biggest one that is less than that is root 121 because they asked me for the largest integer. In other words, n must equal 11. Number 1.3. This one looks daunting. So you've got two terms on the top. I'm going to take out a common factor and I'm going to take out the common factor with the one that has the smaller exponent. Remember when you multiply, you add your indices. So what must I add to 2020 to get to 2022? I must add 2. So that becomes a 7 squared. 7 to the 2020 into itself goes 1. 7 squared, 49, minus 1, 48. 12 into 48 goes 4. And then I can take the square root of each one. The square root of 4 is 2. Divide your power by 2, you get 1010. And again, I equate the a is 2 and the b is 1010. Example number 2. It's a word problem. And what you've got to do in word problems is you've got to read very carefully and get the maths out of the words. So you've got 26 meters of fencing to enclose a rectangular garden. The garden must have an area of at least 36 meters squared. And they say to you, determine the possible lengths 
of one of the sides. They've used the plural there, which means maybe I'm going to get more than one answer. So pause the video, try this, and then we'll look at it together. I find drawing a picture helps. So you've got a rectangular garden. I let one of the sides be X. Now I've got 26 meters for all four sides, which means for these two sides, I must have 13 meters. So if one side is X, the other side must be 13 minus X, because then these two sides use 13 meters, the other two sides use the other 13 meters, and there's my 26 meters. So I let the sides be X and 13 minus X. I want an area, so I take length times breadth. It must be at least 36 meters squared, so I make the area greater than or equal to 36. Multiply your brackets and set up your quadratic equation. I don't like factorizing with a negative x squared, so I'm going to multiply everything by minus 1. And do not forget when you do so that the inequality sign changes. Factorize the trinomial. You have a quadratic inequality. It's a positive x squared. My zeros are 4 and 9. Where is this less than or equal to 0? There. In other words, when x is greater than or equal to 4, less than or equal to 9. And those are the possible lengths of one of the sides. Now one good thing in word problems is always to check your answer and see whether it makes sense. Our answer was that x must be greater than or equal to 4, less than or equal to 9, and my sides were x and 13 minus x. So let me take some of the numbers and see how they work. If I take x is 4, my other side is 13 minus 4, which means my area is 36. And the question said I had to have at least 36 meters squared. So 36 is fine. What about if I have x to be 5? My other side is 13 minus 5 and my area is 40, which is at least 36. If my side is 6, the other side 13 minus 6, area 42. That's fine. What about fractions? If one side is four and a half, 13 minus four and a half, and the area, 38 and a quarter. So it doesn't matter what my sides are, one of the sides can go from four up to nine, and my area will always be greater than or equal to 36. Thank you for watching this video. Brought to you by the Answer Series. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.